All right, Pam, I appreciate you giving me this chance to cook this omelet. Well, great, David. You know, you are kind of thought of as the omelet king at our extension office as you like to treat us to an occasional omelet. All right. Well, we're going to cut the uh, eye on over here, and I'm going to use a little bit. I'm going to save this part here of the spring onion for another project that I've got going on. And I'll use, actually, you can use a spring onion all the way up, and this will give us a little bit of green right here in the uh, omelet. And I don't have a lot of green today in the rest of it, so. Here we go. We'll start with that and then with the mushrooms. Now this is actually uh, a portobello mushroom and I couldn't find the shiitake mushrooms locally. Locally shiitake mushrooms are normally what we grow here. Uh, I've helped several people grow the shiitake mushrooms and it is a similar mushroom as far as taste and what have you but uh, the portobellas will do if I can't get what I want and we'll put them in here. Of course you can put a lot of other things in here too for the uh, protein part of it. You could put the uh, ham or uh, Well, you really don't need chicken. any more protein because those eggs are filled with protein. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love to have a little protein. They are filled with protein. All right. The pan's getting a little hot here. Let me cool it down just a touch. And a little bit of olive oil, which mushrooms do real good with butter, but every time I say butter, the nutritionalists sort of cringe, so I'm going to swap over and use a little bit of olive oil uh, for the About mushrooms. How much would you say you put in there, David? On the olive oil? Mm -hmm. Enough to keep them sticking because I don't have a non-stick pan here. Okay. Uh, if I had a non-stick pan, I wouldn't have to use as much, but mushrooms taste a little bit better. They get a little bit of uh, butter or oil on them, quite honestly. So there we go on that. And, and you know, if me... you had a non-stick pan, that would make your cooking job a little bit easier. Easy. Easier. Okay. Oh, easy. That's right. Omelets are very easy. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, let that heat up just a little bit right there. And then I am going to uh, get me a couple of other things set up here. We've got some of our goat cheese, which, uh, again, this is another fat, so you've got to be careful. And you've told me before about the size of a dice is three dice is a serving, right? Uh, a one dice represents um, one ounce. So you're probably putting in about three ounces of goat cheese. Okay. Or gouda cheese. I'm sorry, gouda cheese. And Made this, from goats. And yep. this came from the farmer's market, It right? did. It did. And we'll also uh, get a little bit of... Uh, and you can use these mushrooms raw, but I, I prefer them cooked. And so that's why I'm going to pre-cook them a little bit. Uh, got my cheese ready here. I'll get me a little bit of this uh, pepper here. Well, now, David, did you wash this pepper? I did. I did. Okay. I just Always want to make habit, sure. Uh, to wash your produce. Uh, on those cherry tomatoes, I doubt they've been sprayed, quite honestly. But uh, it's just a habit to get into. And I wash my hands too, Pam. Well, good. I know you don't make me sound that way, but we, it's really important that it we is, wash it is. our produce and, of course, wash our hands. And the other thing that is not obvious yet, but it'll be obvious, I hope, is I'm trying to prevent cross-contamination from the eggs to the uh, vegetables. We're, we can't really be sure uh, that we've not contaminated the vegetables if we're not careful. And you will notice by the time I'm finished that I'm very careful with that. Good. So anyway, I've got a few uh, peppers right there, and we'll put in a few of these uh, cherry tomatoes right here. Uh, I like the red cherry tomatoes because of the color contrast with the uh, yellow of the egg, but I grow some real nice yellow cherry tomatoes too, and uh, they will uh, not color contrast as well, but they really taste pretty good. So here we go. All right, let me bring back my other items right here. Well, those mushrooms are looking good and tender. Let me move that so we can see it better. All right. Now, keep that heating up a little bit. And get it hot enough to kill all the bacteria in there. Next thing we got to do is we got to crack the eggs. And Pam, you ought to learn how to crack them with one hand. Well, right. David, I crack on the side of a container. I uh, see so you, you're showing off and you're cracking on the cabinet. That's fine. Well, little kids are impressed by this. Now, women normally not. My wife's never impressed with I this. I am not impressed because you're going to uh, have a greater potential or chance of getting eggshells in there. Oh, my goodness. And those eggs are just rolling around your hand. Okay. 
That's why I'm going to wash my hands. My I hands are now contaminated. That's I go to the sink and I wash my hands and the counter is contaminated. So I will bring back a towel and wipe uh, the counter a off. A soapy towel. That's great, David. All right. There we go. Now, a lot of people will uh, like to put water or milk or mm -hmm. something in here. And I've seen people separate the eggs, egg whites, mm -hmm. and milk and solvent mm -hmm. and all that. And it doesn't taste quite as good, in my opinion. I like I to just use this. I agree with you. I, but I this like to This is going to give you the best, best taste. You can add milk or uh, add water. or Water is probably a better solvent. But anyway, if we get it going like that, now, we are ready to put it in here. Our Cook Smart, Eat Smart book that we have in extension will give you some definite combinations and ideas. Um, David, and I guess you're just kind of putting in whatever you have in the omelet. Yeah, if, if I have it and I want it, that's the two keys. Oh, if you have it and you want it. Yeah, no other combination will work, you know, if you, uh, and you want to cut this back down and cool it back off or you damage your oil a little bit there. Yeah, if you don't have it, you don't put it in there. If you uh, have it and you don't want it, you don't put it in there. If you uh, don't want it and don't have it, you don't put it in there, you know, so. That, that didn't make a there. lot of sense, but I think what you're trying to say is if it's in the kitchen sink, you'll use it, right? Nope. Okay. Anything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> you gonna get me throwing the kitchen sink in here yet? Okay, let me put a little bit of this across here and a little bit of this. Now I notice your pan is hot and you're really not touching the omelet mixture at all right now. You're just letting it set, is that correct? That's it, you gotta let it sit just a little bit of while here. And actually I've got that end of the pan a little bit hotter than this end right here. Bring my stuff across here, divvying it up. And sometimes, uh, you know, if one person wants an item and Dutton, I'll leave one side blank for them to use right there. But at this point in time, use a spatula, which a spatula would be good if it was a little bit longer than that, a little bit longer handle. I had a good one one time, but it got away from me. So here we go. Flip it over like that and push this on up on the eye to heat it a little bit more. And so you're going to do heat. a triple fold, almost an envelope fold? Yeah, I will. And don't worry about it if, it if it falls apart, that's good because it's good to have the vegetables invisible in sight. You know, if a few of them get kicked out here, I just throw it on top. Now, the real professionals, I'm, I'm an amateur pan, but the real professionals will take these nonstick pans. And they'll cook everything on top of it. And when they flip it out of your plate, they'll sort of flip it over like yes. that. Uh -huh. That's impressive. I can't That's do that. That's impressive. OK. Yeah, I have to do it this way here. Uh, give me another chance here to flip it the rest of the way. Well, you're impressive in the fact that you're doing a three-way or an envelope fold. A lot of times, omelets are just folded in half. So now we want to make sure that that's done. And we'll be ready to. Uh... Uh, David, you can probably eyeball that. But if you wanted to use a digital thermometer, you would be cooking the eggs to about 160 degrees. 160, which if it's runny, it ain't 160. That's right. Um, might need to cook just another second. It's not ready yet. Time, patience, on all this. I now, know. some other combinations that uh, I, spinach is a good one. Use spinach and cheese inside of an omelet. That does an excellent job like that. I will also, like I said, use ham at times, mm -hmm. uh, chicken, I will use uh, turkey. I don't like to use the beef uh -huh. or the venison. I have, you know, but they don't do quite as well as right. a combination. Uh, tomatoes, I love tomatoes, but if it's out of season during the winter and I've got some canned salsa, mm -hmm. I might use salsa on that. If it is uh, the, the peppers, people, some people like to use hot peppers. I'm not much into jalapeno peppers, but I've seen it done. You could use that. And then you can use a whole range of spices, you know, like your basil. If you want to do a basil and cheese omelet like that, you could do that. You could do uh, rosemary. There's a number of different things that you could, uh, you could do to, uh, to make that work. Pamela, you think it's good enough for you now? Well, uh, David, is not you're, running. you're the chef, so... There we go. Okay. All right. That cherry tomato certainly does look great. Gives it a little bit of color, doesn't it? Yeah, that's why I say. If things fall out, you can just get them over there. And we'll cut that off. And, and David, uh, you know, an omelet is one step. The next step is a frittata. And a frittata is very similar to an omelet, but you don't have to do any of the turning and you just cook it in your pan. Right. And I bet you could do that for us for next staff conference, a frittata. Well, the, the trick on a frittata is a little bit lower heat than what I had mm -hmm. here. 
And the other thing is, towards the end, you can cover it up and cook the top of it a little bit it better. And set it a little bit better. Uh, with a frittata. But uh, with the omelets here, these are real quick. Normally, uh, about nine minutes from the time I walk into the kitchen, I can have an omelet uh, sitting on the table. And that looks pretty good, on it? It looks delicious. Well, until next time, let's eat smart and eat local. <laughs>